Greetings and welcome to St. Benedict Parish. Today we gather as a community of faith to celebrate the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. We extend a warm welcome to parishioners, alumni, and friends that are joining us for today's celebration. We especially welcome all those that are joining us for the first time and those joining us from across the country. We are honored that you have chosen to worship with us this week. Before we begin, please note that the worship aid with music and readings for today can be found on the parish website under the live stream tab. We encourage you to download it and follow along. You'll also find a video for children's liturgy of the word on the parish website, which is a shorter reflection geared toward our youngest parishioners. Finally, we want to extend a word of gratitude to all those that have continued to support the parish during these extraordinary times. For those wishing to make a, a gift, simply visit the parish website and click the donate button or mail in your envelopes to the rectory. Thank you for your continued support of our parish. Please join in singing our opening hymn, which can be found in the worship aid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Messiah, who suffered for us and redeemed us to a life everlasting. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of Man with the power and authority to forgive our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive Seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace. I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder when he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Your love is eternal. 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, to Lord. Lord. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters in Christ, many times when we gather as in a group, sometimes we talk about church, uh, what's, what's going on in the church uh, throughout the world. And many times, uh, sometimes you'll get, we'll get uh, the reply, well, if I were Pope, I would do it this way. Or if I were Pope, I would change this or that. So why can't we do it? Or what, is, what, do we, what do we understand what the Pope can do or cannot do? We see in the Gospel today that Jesus asks the disciples a question. Who do you say that the Son of Man is? And there's all sorts of answers. Some say a prophet, some say Elijah, some say John the Baptist, all different kinds of answers. And so the church, in a sense, isn't a, a matter of taking a consensus or taking a vote. If they voted for John the Baptist or Elijah, one of the prophets, we would be following Elijah or one of the other ones. That's not the case. 
Then he turns, our Lord turns and he says, but you, just apostles, who do you say that I am? And again, they're perplexed. They have nothing to say. It's only one person who stands up. Notice that when he's asking these questions, he says he asks his disciples and they reply, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But now it's not just they replied, but it's Peter who replies and says, you are the Christ, the son of a living God. And our Lord reminds him, he says, no, no one has revealed this to you except my father in heaven. And so in some ways, Peter's given spiritual insight. He's given some kind of spiritual gift in which he's able to profess his faith in our Lord. And so um, our Lord goes on to say, you are, um, you are Peter on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of the, of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It goes back to the first reading, Isaiah 22. Isaiah 22 talks about these keys that um, he is given. And with those keys, he is the master of the palace. He decides who comes in, who does not come in. He has a lot of power and a lot of control with those keys. And so in some ways, Peter is given those keys in order to have control or power over, um, over the church, over Christ's church. And so in a sense, um, he's given this power in order to lead them. So as he leads them, we have to remember that many times it's not him speaking, but it's the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that guides the church and that guides Peter to an answer, to an insight as to what's going on. Now this takes a leap of faith. It's not easy to say, to look at the, um, the successor to Peter, Pope Francis, and say, I believe what you say and I trust what you say. Sometimes it's not always that easy. And so again, we have to be aware of that first and foremost. But again, the Holy Spirit, God, our, our Lord gives the Holy Spirit to Peter to reveal the true, uh, what we believe. And we have to have faith in that, that he continues, and the Holy Spirit continues to guide us through the Holy Father and through the bishops as well. Now, there's two ways um, in which we can we look at these things. Number one is our doctrine, our faith, what we believe. That can't change. It could grow, certainly, but it can't change. We can't say one minute that I believe in Jesus Christ, he is the Son of God, and in the next moment say, well, he's not the Son of God anymore. It doesn't change. Our doctrine won't change. What we believe doesn't change. This is the stuff, these are the things that we have to hold, hold firm to the faith. These are the things that when the Holy Father gives it to us, we have to accept. Now again, he's got a very, uh, popes have a very powerful and frightening position because they have to carry down what has been handed down to them and continue to hand it down to their successors and the people in the church. It's not an easy task. Again, he can't waver from faith or morals. He has to hold on to those things, to what he has been given, to what he has received, and then again to hand that on. But there's something that he can't change, and anyone who's been um, alive the last 60 or 70 years is aware of praxis. Although our faith, although our beliefs, although our doctrine doesn't change, praxis does change. What we believe, or how we believe it, how we put it into practice, how we express those beliefs can change. Anyone who's been through the Second Vatican Council and seen the changes that have gone on in the 1970s and seen the changes within the Mass 
Mass, how it's practiced, our belief in the Eucharist, but we practice it, has changed, has developed over time. And so in a sense, um, those things can change. How we put things into practice can change and develop with time. But certainly our doctrine can't. And so our Lord gives us a very powerful gift in the church and a very powerful gift, especially within the Vicar for Christ, namely St. Peter, in order to uh, be given the, the power that not even the gates of hell shall prevail against it. And we know that throughout the centuries, two, three thousand, two thousand years, throughout the centuries, there have been many who have tried to destroy the church. In fact, some of our great historians have said at the very beginning of the church, the church should never have existed. The church should have fallen apart. With all the persecution going on in the early church, it should have not, never have took off as it did. But it did because the Holy Spirit was upon it. And we have the promise of our Lord himself. The gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. And so we know that our Lord continues to watch over the church and protect it. And again, as we move forward, things may change. How we worship, how we put things into practice may change. But we, what we believe will stay the same. And again, the Lord gives us this promise and he gives us this gift to Peter and his successors. And so as we continue on through this uh, week, Let's continue to remember the power that the church offers us, but also the very scary thing that, he, that it offers us. It demands for us to take a leap of faith. We're going to see next week, it's so easy to, to take charge and say, well, if I were Pope, I would do it this way. Praxis, you could change. Doctrine, you can't change. And so again, to be aware of those two things, be aware of um, what, we can, uh, what we believe and how those things are firmly instilled. We can't, after 2,000 years, say, okay, we're going to knock off this doctrine. We're not going to believe this anymore. We hold on to it, which in some ways is a blessing, but in other ways some consider it a curse, that we hold on to our tradition, that we hold on to the past, and what we believed in the past and what has been handed down from the apostles to the successors to the apostles, et cetera, et cetera, handed down to us. 2,000 years later, the doctrine has grown, but again, it hasn't changed. It hasn't uh, flipped around. What the, what the early apostles believed is what we believe today as well. So let's continue to ask the Lord to send down his Holy Spirit down upon the church upon us so that we may have the strength to believe and then to take what we believe and then put it into action. And let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We call upon our Heavenly Father, trusting that he will hear the prayers we faithfully present to him. As the body of Christ, we are called to profess and live our faith. May we not only say that we are Christ's disciples, but also show others who we are by our actions. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. We elect leaders in government who have integrity, honor, and a desire to serve. May they all use their God-given power and authority to place the needs and rights of the oppressed before all else. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In this time of pandemic raging throughout the world, people are anxious and worried about their day-to-day -day lives. May we all continue to find ways to be compassionate, to forgive, and to be of service to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As we embark on our journey to renew my church, we pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit for the parishes of St. Benedict, St. Andrews, Our Lady of Lourdes, and St. Mary of the Lake. May the Holy Spirit help us carry out spiritual practices that will deepen our knowledge and love of God and respond to Christ's call to discipleship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Teachers, staff, and students are preparing to begin another academic year. May they all find creative and safe ways to learn and grow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Many in our community and the world suffer chronic illness, pain, or injury. May they and those we especially pray for, Larry Sajdek, Stell Orbert, Feli Gold, Linda McCary, Gladys Hunter, Dradeen Robin Udakis, Gloria Resede, Ledna Wildner, Ellen Roberts, Kelly Hulper, Phil May, Danilo Balasena, Annette Bowles, and Laborio Pereja, find relief and care in those who tend to their needs and in the peace of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We remember all who have died recently, especially Harry Cobb and all our beloved departed. May they know the joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for the special intention of this weekend's Masses, for Ronald Egan, Sarah and William Gilger, Consuelo Buenavela Vida, and St. Benedict parishioners. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May God hear all the prayers we hold in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Generous God, St. Peter professed Christ as Christ, the Son of a living God. May we, the body of Christ, share in this faith with a steadfast heart and be a source of healing and hope for our world. In your knowledge and wisdom, grant us what we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Seek 
Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good and source of life, have made all that is so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them too, confess your name in exaltation, give voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures, and that through the disobedience that had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to be the, to, to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again, you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so love the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To those in sorrow of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for, it, for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, we might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when, it, when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were, were in, his, in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, a sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon this, this sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into, the, into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, O Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, all those who, part, who take part in this, in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in, your, in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death. We may glorify you through Jesus Christ, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, roof but only say the word, and my soul, soul shall be healed. healed. prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. My Jesus, Jesus I, believe I believe that you, that you are in the blessed sacrament. sacrament. I love you above all things. I, I love, love you above all things. things. And I long for you in my soul. And I, and I long, long for you in my soul. soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, since, since I cannot I receive, you receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Come, come at least spiritually into, into my heart. heart. As though you have already come, as though, as though you, you have already, already come, come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. I embrace, I embrace you and unite, unite myself entirely, entirely to you. you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never, Never permit, permit me to be separated, separated from, from you. you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth to proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.